Welcome to Talking with Coleraine Township. We have the chance today to meet the brand new Coleraine trustee, Matt Wallert. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me on. Um, I want to make sure we get a chance for everyone in Coleraine. Some folks in Coleraine know you and got a chance to meet you during the campaign. Um, but now that all of that is over, I want to make sure everyone gets a chance to find out who you are and what kind of things they'll see. So um, let me start with how long have you lived in Coleraine? So I grew up partially in Coleraine. Uh, after grade school, we uh, moved to Coleraine Township. And I attended high school at St. X when, when we lived here and um, enjoyed, uh, enjoyed living here. I bought my first car at Bennett Ford, which is uh, now, I, I guess, kind of part of the Joseph family. Uh, my first job at Bob Evans. Um, so if you ate biscuits at Bob Evans uh, back in the mid 80s, I was probably the guy that made them. I worked okay. third shift while I was uh, third shift during the weekends while I was in high school, which I think now would be probably all kinds of laws would be broken. But, uh, uh, you know, back then, that's kind of how we did things. Um, my mom has lived here uh, for most of her adult life. And, and uh, I found the occasion to move back to kind of um, be closer to her. She had some health issues and that's kind of what brought me back. She, she had taught at Northwest High School, uh, or I'm sorry, Northwest uh, um, School District for quite a while and uh, probably taught many of you or many of your kids. And it's always kind of been a love for Cole Rain for me. So it was about coming back to community. Okay, so you've been part of the community. There's, there's a lot of places. I, I, I find myself wanting to ask if you still make biscuits, if you're still <laughs> using those skills now. I don't think I ate a bit. I've eaten a biscuit since I left Bob Evans. I know that's hard for people to believe okay. out there, perhaps, okay. but uh, yeah, that was enough because we would make for Sunday morning trays and trays and trays of them. That's you're all biscuited out. Yeah, that's okay. right. <laughs> Just curious. Uh, so don't bring biscuits to the next meeting. Okay, got it. Um, what kind of what kind of projects and organizations or, or things in the community might folks have seen you at? Uh, so the, I, I guess kind of the, the hallmark item I did um, a couple of summers ago was the sales tax repeal effort. And that was more of a, a countywide kind of initiative, and that's when um, when the, when the when the county commissioners decided to uh, pass an additional sales tax. I decided that you know I think that the process is important. I think people need to vote. So um, myself and some some of my friends went out and proceeded to get thirty eight thousand signatures so they could be put on the ballot. Um, and it's interesting because as soon as we got the signatures and enough to put on the ballot, the commissioners pulled it. And uh, we found that tax back again a couple of months ago. Um, and for me, it was always a question of uh, making sure that we had the correct process involved. Uh, in addition to that, I've been a frequent guest on um, the WLW and WKRC uh, with Brian Thomas, um, uh, with uh, Rocky Boyman and, and some of those shows. Uh, uh, and also a guest columnist in the Cincinnati Enquirer. So I've kind of had my hand in local politics for, for uh, probably three or four years. Okay, okay. So, and I think that's important to bring up because um, sometimes if you're looking in different parts of the community, these folks might not have seen you or think, well, who is he and is he new? You're not new to no, this in the community. You've absolutely not. <laughs> okay, okay. That's important. So what made you think, you know what, I think the next thing I want to do is trustee of Coleraine Township. So I, I went to a meeting, um, and it, when I when I moved back to Coleraine, I had been a member of North College Hill, uh, uh, City Council, and I said, well, I'm really not going to get involved politically. I'll go to the meetings, and, you know, I'll be that person in the back row that, that throws spitballs at the, uh, at the at the camera and at the trustees, and I'll cause my share of... Uh, commotion and, and churning, but when I sat there, I think the first meeting I went to maybe got out around, I think it was like 1.30 or 2 a.m., and, and immediately I'm like, all right, you know, I'm really moved to try to do something. And, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of, as a teacher, as an individual, as a son, as a brother, I've always, always been the type that, uh, what can I do to help improve people's lives? What can I do to help people? And, and to me, that became a natural next step. I will say, as the person running those cameras, <laughs> thank you for not throwing spitballs at my cameras. I do appreciate that. Not yet. That's after January 1st, I think. Oh, you'll wait till you're in. Okay, That's right. got it, got it. I, I'm right behind you in that tech <laughs> closet, so I'll know where to go. Um, I, I, I think that's really interesting, though, that you were there and seeing what's going on and thinking, maybe this is something. So what, what about your background did you feel like 
you know what, I think I have these skills that will help this go well. So I, I think I have really an eclectic mix of skills. When I got out of college at University of Cincinnati, I ran my own business for about nine or ten years. Um, and I kind of found that, well, that, that wasn't really fulfilling for me. I wanted to be more in, intimately involved in helping people. And that's when I decided to get an education. Um, so I've now taught for uh, 20, it's, it's on 20 years, it's hard to believe, taught U.S. government, taught world history. Um, I went and got a master's degree in, in, in uh, political science and a Ph.D. in political science. And I still teach one course a, a semester up at Miami and Oxford and have so for eight or nine years. Um, written a number of articles about government and uh, decision making by policymakers. Uh, so I think I have kind of an academic skill set that, that reflects well on, on maybe getting policy done, but also I have the kind of practical thing of being in a classroom and satisfying the demands of maybe 40 different individuals or, or running a small business and you know doing things like making payroll and paying off bills and and knowing that from one moment to the next, you know, when you're in small business, I, I used to always joke with people, there are days that I couldn't buy a pizza and there are days that it would be like, wow, I'm flush. And, and that's kind of how it works. And, and I think that that's an interesting perspective uh, to bring to government as well. So when you have been sitting in the back of those meetings and now you've actually sat in on, um, I know you sat in on the last meeting as a, more of an observer up at the dais there. Mm -hmm. Um, what are some things that you're seeing that you really like that you're seeing in Coleraine? I, I, I like, uh, you know, I like the, uh, the department heads, the administration, um, the, the staff at the township. I, I think that uh, I, I love the people. I love the diversity of people. Um, I, I love the fact that there's a lot of folks that have initiative to kind of do what I did, but maybe on a different stage. Instead of running for trustee, perhaps they'll work with a volunteer group or, or they'll create, in many ways, create their own volunteer group. And I think that that's uh, important, too, and that a lot of citizens are well engaged. And I think that's important. And from a kind of a broad perspective, I believe that engagement and education um, for citizens is really the key to, to maintaining our republic, maintaining our democratic republic. And there's no better example than uh, local government. So that interesting, the joke I always tell people is that after teaching government for 14 or 15 years, I used to do uh, local politics like the last two weeks of school. I'm like, all right, we'll throw this local stuff in. Once I got into local politics, I cover it sporadically throughout the entire year, but I start, I start the year with it because I think that this is a level where you can impact people's lives positively and negatively, and that's why I consider it such an important calling. And I'm going to piggyback on that because, okay. of course, I'm the government programming coordinator at Waycross Community Media, but you just said what I have always said, that it's the local government that we get the least exposure to in our civics education in school, except in your classroom now. Um, Although guilty previously. Right. Well, <laughs> I mean, it's just, I realize that they have to make textbooks they can sell right. nationally. And so they can't cover if a town has trustees or council or, or so on and so forth. But that is the government that most directly affects you. Um, whether there's curfews, whether you have sidewalks, with the things that you touch every day happen at those town meetings um, and not at the levels that you talked about in the civics class. So as uh, a little self-serving, but at, at the way cross level, that's, that's what we're excited about is helping people get connected to that because it's, the exciting part is that's also the level of government that the average citizen is most able to connect to and see immediate results. That's exactly, it's, you could pick up a phone and in Coring Township, uh, I know that, you know, I will have my cell phone number on there. Uh, uh, the other two trustees are available too. I, I can't call, I mean, I guess I can call my senator or congressperson, but, you know, I'm going to get, I'm going to get an aide or I'm going to get a, right. a, 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 a voicemail. Um, and, and at this level, you know, I may not give you the answer that you want or the other trustees won't, but you'll get an answer. And I think that that's, yeah. that's important and significant in this process. I think it really is. And um, you talked about how engaged the Coleraine community is. And I see that um, as I'm in various different communities throughout the county, I have never seen a community so actively taking responsibility for what's happening in their town as individuals and not just waiting for someone else to do it. So um, I, it's exciting for me because I'm there seeing that happen. So. Um, now, that being said, what are some of the things that you're looking to ahead and thinking, yeah, but 
These are some of the challenges I'd like to address. Uh, well, I think there's a, I think that we have kind of um, policy challenges. Uh, and for me, uh, that starts with, uh, you know, police, fire, public services. Uh, we have a, a number of roads that really need to be repaired, repaved, whatever you want to do. We have uh, challenges financially from with the police department and the fire department coming soon. Uh, but I also think that you kind of have uh, just a, a general sense of the community challenge. I mean, it's, it's also about making things as transparent as possible. It, it, one of the things that I suggested uh, in my campaign that I, I'm going to follow up immediately is just slow the process down a little bit. I mean, a lot of times there'll be one reading, um, the, the agenda packet is very, very long, um, and, you know, we, we get it out much earlier than we used to. Uh, but I still think it's important to, to engage uh, the citizens with that and get their feedback because ultimately that's what makes the process better. A lot of people look at things and say, wow, that was such a, that, that was such a rough meeting. Look at all the people that spoke out. And my, my point is, no, no, that's how it works. I mean, the old joke is, you know, you don't want to see how the sausage is made. You just want to take, taste the sausage when it comes to government. And I think uh, there's no better example than what goes on in Coleraine. Um, so I think a challenge is, is to, uh, I think from the administration and from uh, the trustees, is clearly communicating uh, what, what you're doing and, and why you're doing it. And, and if I could just kind of take an, a second yeah. to give you an example. Absolutely. Uh, our most recent meeting, we talked about a proposal uh, from a third party um, that, that on how to reduce the traffic uh, congestion on coal rain. We had a lot of interested people because one of the recommendations was no left turns, which you would have a hard, hard sell to convince me that that would be a great idea. Um, and I'm not speaking for the others, but I would think so too, judging from their comments last meeting. Uh, and there's this general sense in the community, look at what the trustees are doing. No, 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 the trustees got a third party to come out with a report that had many suggestions, some of which I think are good and some of which I'm like, well, I'll pass. Uh, but it's a challenge to communicate to the citizens that, hey, this isn't something I'm pushing. This is something I want you to react to. I want you to tell me what you think. Now, in the case of the no left turns, I already know where I think uh, on that issue. And, and I think that the citizens are pretty uniform in how they responded as well. But that's part of the process. I, I mean, I think it's better to go get that third party to do that analysis than for the trustees or the administration to sit around and come up with it uh, without having an independent kind of uh, an, an independent kind of moderator in the middle to, to say, hey, this is what we think is best. Now, ultimately, it's what the people uh, think is best because they're the ones that live there. And all, you know, uh, the, the individuals that do a report may lack some of the institutional and cultural history that's important uh, to put such a recommendation in context. They may not have known that there were concrete barriers there years ago and it, it, it was not met with smiles, so to speak. <laughs> That's a nice way to put it. Yeah. <laughs> no, um, and, and again, I was at that meeting and the engagement, they were there, they were listening. Um, and you're right, that is the point. That's not a bad meeting. Mm -hmm. That is, uh, we have had a study done. Now we need to know what you think about the study. Um, and that's much better than, gee, it's good the trustees had a study done. Let's not bother to read it and move on. I so, mean, yeah. You know, 100 years ago, there wouldn't be, there wouldn't be a study and there'd be three or four people in a back room deciding what, it, what what's going to be the future of this major, major uh, thoroughfare that impacts 60,000 people at least that live here and multiple thousands other that travel here daily. So you transparency and communication come up a lot. They come mm -hmm. up from the public too. Um, are there any other ideas that you have that you think might be possible? Granted, each one has to be examined. You, right. know, you come up with ideas and then you look at each one. But. Hey, so this kind of comes to me in very, very odd times and odd ways. The one idea that, that I initially suggested, because I know a lot of people aren't online, so to speak, and to send out newsletters to you know, 60,000 people is a really prohibitive thing. Just to, People still use telephones, the old-fashioned, like, you know, just use a phone kind of a voicemail. Press one for events coming up in February, press two for events coming up uh, in March, or press one for the first week of January, uh, just so people have additional ways. And, and it's interesting because when I brought that up, a citizen came up after the meeting and said, yeah, it would be nice if you would have monitors out in the administration building as well. Um, and, and there are a number of electronic signs throughout the community too that I think that 
uh, we can get people to have buy-in. It's to me, it's all about getting all the stakeholders to buy in, whether it be the school district, the businesses, the citizens, um, any of the folks uh, that, that have a stake in the community. And, and that would be a way to kind of increase that uh, communication. Because I, I think that I, that is an issue when you talk about a community that's, that's our size. And um, ultimately, you'll always have the restrictions of a budget, even though, you know, Corrine's a $40 million budget, but it would be a lot higher if we had to send out a weekly newsletter. Yeah. It would yeah. be almost prohibitive. Just just printing and postage all by itself would, right. would, would make that difficult, let alone someone to actually lay it out and put it together. Absolutely. And, and the other idea that came to me actually yesterday, just kind of driving around, uh, as I was thinking about, uh, interestingly enough, I do read them somewhat, thinking about Facebook posts and the Corain groups. And I thought, you know what? You know what works in Corain very well? Citizen Fire Academy. What, what works real well in Corain or Citizen Police Academy. And I know that other cities have done Citizens Government Academy. Okay. It's and it, to me that that's something that I'm going to look to develop because it it, it kind of checks off a lot of boxes. It's a training ground for future leaders, whether they're going to be elected leaders or leaders on uh, the zoning board or leaders in nonprofits. Uh, but it also helps uh, um, it helps the buy-in. Citizens know exactly what this is all about. It makes and I think think Corain really does a uh, makes a a real strong effort to be transparent, but this makes that transparency more transparent. I mean, it's, it's one way to say we're transparent here are 400 pages, but it's another thing to say we're transparent, here's what you can expect in, in, in a trustee agenda, or here's what you can expect at a public hearing. And, and I, it, to me, that would be another example. And I, you know, I kind of have this list that's been growing, and generally my plan on this has been that around the first of the year or so, I'm going to kind of whittle this down and kind of come up with my legislative agenda and what I'd like to see and, and make some steps towards some of these positive things. That's that's actually interesting because that brings it right back to a government academy to what we were saying at the beginning is that most of us in our traditional civics education in high school or fifth grade or whenever we had our government education, we didn't cover local government. Right. So now we're asking grown-ups in the community to participate in local government and to be fair they really don't know what it's covering and what it's responsible for and how certain parts of it work um, so it's kind of a way to remedy that well and, and to, yeah. to be fair to my teacher brethren um, I mean come on we're in the middle of an impeachment right what am I going to teach impeachment or this is how the zoning process works right. Right. I mean I need to kind of grab their attention well as well and I think you know, you do what you can in a classroom, and oh, right. by the way, we'll throw in standardized tests that you need to kind of be responsible oh, yeah. for. So, uh, but I do, do think it's a logical yeah. next step is to get folks involved. Um, you know, I, rem I remember campaigning. Some of the questions I got were clearly people that were uh, uh, part of the attentive public, but still didn't. Some of the some of the processes were still a little unfamiliar for to him, and and I think. It, it, we haven't given them tools in order to understand that in many cases. Oh, I think it's great. I think, I, I agree. I don't think everyone in the classroom is now able to cover it mm. because of the other demands that are being put on them. And like you said, opportunities of, <laughs> right. to teach something else. Um, but it definitely does kind of put that back on the town then to say, well, if you want your citizens to know about local government, guess who's going to have to tell them? Mm -hmm. um, and I do, in my daily work, t f come across... Uh, what's, so what does county government do versus what does your town government do? Mm -hmm. um, and I see that come up at various different towns meetings, P uh, requests from citizens that really need to go to the Hamilton County Commissioners, so they really need to go to the state. So um, I think that's a really interesting perspective on that, is to understand that they're asking for things and they're not really sure who to ask or what to ask. So, so maybe that should be addressed next. And I think that also yeah. promotes cooperation and working together. Yeah. I mean, from my uh, discipline of political science, there's a, one of the masterworks is called Bowling Alone by Robert Putnam. And he said that in America, we're losing a little bit of our civic culture because we used to have bowling leagues. And now, I don't know, we're playing, um, I don't know, computer games. Not, yeah. yeah, things like that. And, um, and, and that process is impacting the long-term uh, the long-term health of our of our uh, democratic republic, um, and also once you get people to work together uh, on on small issues, it becomes much easier. And, and the word that we usually use is functionalism. It becomes much easier to work towards bigger issues. You don't one day wake up and say, for instance, let's build a million-dollar Megaland Park. 
uh, it's a little easier to get people to agree to, hey, what should uh, what should we do with um, what should we do with with noise ordinances or something? I mean, you, you start at if you start at the high level, you're you're very likely going to have a difficult road. In in my that view, makes sense. that makes sense. Well, before we we've covered a lot, um, uh, but before we wrap up, is there anything else you really would like the citizens of Colerain to know? Um, no, I'd just like to thank everybody that voted for me, and, and, and um, this may sound strange, everybody that didn't. Uh, that's, again, part of this process. You'll hear this word from me in the next four years, an awful lot process. Um, if you read any of my uh, uh, editorials in the Inquirer or hear me on the radio, you'll hear that word, an awful lot process. Um, as a baseball fan, uh, you know, it's, it's to me the Joey Votto. Uh, you may not always get the best result, but... If you work through a very clean and kind of disciplined process, you're more likely you're more likely to over repeated uh, repeated number of times. And, and I'll just leave you with kind of my two general views on uh, governance and even just decision making. Is that um, and number one, you start where you have common ground. You work from there, and you, and then you try to expand from that point. Um, you know whether you're in my political party, not in my political party, whether you hate me, whether you like me, whatever, if we agree on an issue, um, I want to work with you on that. And the second thing is, and this is kind of incompatible, I think, sometimes to, to the election cycle, is that I want to get, to me, the most important thing is to make decisions with a long time horizon. Not how it affects the community maybe a week from now or a month from now, but maybe 10 years from now. Because ultimately, that part of the decision-making process, I think, will yield a more optimal decision and, and will uh, be more positive for the community in that we worry about, you know, not just tomorrow, but also generations down the line. Well, I want to really thank you for coming in so that the residents of Colerain get this extra chance to get to hear a little bit more about you and meet you. There's only so much that can, can be expressed during a trustees meeting, so this gives them a little bit more of a chance to know their new trustee. Um, I look forward to more programs over the next couple years and, and getting to see what's happening and um, how that process takes, takes yeah. root. Yeah. And uh, I will just thank you for watching. You've been watching Talking with Colerain, which means you are staying up to date on what's happening in your township. I'm Government Programming Coordinator Dana Gagnon, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.